Well, that was a bit of a comeback down to earth moment, eh? I know it's been a couple years since we've been in the playoffs, and I know we're trying to remember how that all felt and how that stress plays with our minds, but this is just a reminder that playoff series aren't one after one game, or two for that matter, even in best of fives. This series is just getting started. Ah, uh, wow. You have to get up. Do what they do. But that was insane. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Come on. I make go records, baby. I'm liking this. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Hawks Recap. Hashtag late night edition. Blackhawks just finishing up game two of their best of five qualifying round series against the Oilers. And just like game one, the winning team scored six goals, but unlike Game 1, it wasn't the Blackhawks. Blackhawks losing Game 2 to the Oilers by a score of 6-3. to three. A couple key differences between Game Number 2 and Game Number 1. First off, Drake Jula not playing for the Hawks. He was suspended for Game Number 2 because of an illegal hit in Game Number 1. John Quinville inserted into the lineup in his place. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. Number 2, Blackhawks did not get off to a hot start like they did in Game Number 1. In fact, it was the opposite. The Oilers were the ones that got off to the hot start in Game Number 2. PK was better in this game for the Blackhawks and it had to be. Uh, so positive on that front, unfortunately. Not so much on the power play side. Blackhawks did not score three power play goals like they did in game number one. It was definitely a regression to the norm in game number two. They had opportunities. They had plenty of opportunities, but just couldn't get it done. And with all those things combined, it just didn't work out for the Hawks in game two. Connor McDavid. I guess was another key difference. He came to play in this one and he came to play early. 19 seconds into this game, first shift of this game, he would uh, just kind of take a, take a swing at the puck and well, he can do that and he can make it go in and he did. Oilers up 1-0 quite early. Couple shifts after that, Connor McDavid back on the ice and he said, well, I've already done it once, why not do it again? He takes the puck in the neutral zone and when I say takes the puck, I mean like he bats out midair and just kind of plays with it and then looks at everyone else skating and thinks, that's cute, I'll just do my own thing and just races by everyone. I'm surprised he didn't get a speeding ticket for it. But he races in, backhand, roof. It's Connor McDavid. He does Connor McDavid things from time to time. The Oilers are up 2-0, not even five minutes into this game. And if that wasn't bad enough, the Hawks would take a penalty shortly after that, meaning the Oilers' ridiculously good power play is on the ice, about to make this game a rout. But thankfully, as I mentioned just a little bit earlier, the Blackhawks' PK was pretty solid in this game, and they were able to kill off that penalty and were able to kind of give themselves a little bit of a sigh of relief, kind of get themselves calmed down and, and, and get into the game a little bit. Just about nine minutes into the first period, the Hawks would take the puck into the offensive zone. Debrinkat behind the net would find Kane in front of the net, and Kane would put it into the net, making it a 2-1 game, and that's how it would go into the second period. Blackhawks did not play well at all in that first period. They looked... Off. And I don't want to discredit the Oilers because the Oilers played well in that first period. The Oilers played well the entire game. Though the Blackhawks looked, they just looked off. Basically, how I would describe it is the Blackhawks looked like, you know what? Everyone thought we would get swept. We won the first game. Our job is done. Let's go home. That's how the Blackhawks looked in the first period and, and looked for um, a number of other times in this game. But yeah, that was a rough first they got out shot 17-9 it was uh, passes were not crisp Pals, they just they weren't skating I mean it just it was such a far cry from how they played in that first game it was just a completely different different game different team for both the Blackhawks and the Oilers really but it was it was sad to see the Blackhawks not come out and really match the Oilers because we knew the Oilers were going to come out desperate and not like they did in the first game. So that was pretty disappointing. But going into the second period, only down a goal, not too bad. Early in the second period, the Hawks would get hemmed into their own zone, just couldn't find a way to get the puck out, just weren't moving their legs, just weren't tracking pucks down, just weren't making crisp passes, and it comes back to haunt them. 
Ty Lannis just throws a puck on net. It redirects off Nylander. Turnover by him to start this whole thing, by the way. And just kind of fools Crawford and goes five-hole through Crawford. Just a soft deflating goal there. And the Oilers are up 3-1 to one early in the second. Not the way you want to start the second. You were hoping to come back and... And use that momentum that you may have had from Kane's goal to tie the game up. But it goes completely in the opposite direction. And the Hawks now find themselves down by two goals. Credit to the Hawks. They fought back. Kane to brink at Doc. That line was the best line for the Hawks tonight. They went to work. And they were able to get the puck out to Cuckoo. Who was kind of creeping in from the blue line in, in the high slot. He just unleashes a shot and it powers through into the back of the net and makes it a one goal game. And then with about five minutes left to go in the second period, the Hawks would tie it up. Once again, hard work from Doc to bring it and Kane gets the puck out to Olimata. He just puts a shot on, redirects off Russell's skate and kind of trickles into the back of the net. And this game is tied and oh, we got a game on our hands. Unfortunately, the Hawks took way too many penalties in this game. Once again, the key to this series is the Hawks staying out of the penalty box, and they just haven't been able to do it through two games so far. And it bit them here with about three minutes left to go in the second period. They had chances to get this puck out of the zone, like opportunities to just sling it out, and they just couldn't do it. Oilers keep the puck in. Connor McDavid with it on the right-hand side, and he just throws it to the net. It just deflects off Keith's calf and goes five hole in through Crawford and well Connor McDavid with hat trick and the Oilers are up four to three going into the third period now the Hawks hadn't played well through the first two periods but only down a single goal not the worst scenario that we could have had here uh, certainly the game was still up for grabs now remember how John Quinville was in the lineup for Drake Kajula through two periods Quinville was on the ice for just over three minutes. I'm sure that wasn't really the plan. I understand why Quinville was put into the lineup. I don't agree with it, but I understand because he's really the only guy or only reserve that we have that could offer a little bit of a physical presence that we're lacking without Drake Kajula in the lineup. But Quinville really wasn't throwing his body around. He has the body type to do so. He just wasn't doing it. He really wasn't playing well to begin with. Um, if you're only going to play him for three minutes, I would have rather had someone else in there. Once again, either Sakira or Kershev or maybe someone else. But yeah, disappointing that that was the case. However, hopefully uh, we don't have to really have to deal with that again. Because hopefully Drake Kajula will just continue being in the lineup. So third period, game still up for grabs. Hawks trying to find a way to break through and tie this game. Oilers doing a good job, not really giving them any good looks, kind of clogging up a lot of the ice. Also, Oilers had a really good forecheck in this game. One of the things you can do against this Hawks team to really kind of, really kind of destroy them is uh, just have a really strong forecheck. And yeah, the Hawks will turn the puck over in their own zone. And the Hawks had trouble getting out of their own zone quite a bit. Turn the puck over, sloppy passes, what have you. It was tough for the Hawks to really get anything going in the third. And then just over seven minutes into the final frame, the Oilers dump the puck in. Neal goes and chasing it, and it's behind Crawford's net. Crawford goes out to play it, and he just whiffs on it. Neal picks it up, puts it into the net, and it's 5-3. to three. That's a really deflating goal, and that's kind of when you felt, okay, this game is pretty much over. And if you really weren't sure at that point, 40 seconds later, it was made final when there was just basically a dumped in puck, and there's just a scrum in front of the net, and Chase on picks up the loose puck, just wide open net, he puts it in, and 6-3, just in a blink of the eye, and that's how this game would end. So if you're keeping track at home, game one, Hawks played well, Oilers did not. Game number two, Oilers played well, Hawks did not. This series is now a best of three series. And if the Hawks want to make it competitive, they need to get their legs going under them because they weren't there tonight. Hopefully, Kajula getting back into the lineup will help spark that. But we're just going to have to see how these games go, how games three and four go. Those are going to be Home games for the Blackhawks mean they'll have last change. How will that affect um, matchups for the Hawks? 
and they dictate how they want to play McDavid's line or possibly Drysdale's line, although Drysdale hasn't really had as much of an effect in this series so far. But what can the Hawks do to maybe slow down McDavid a little bit? We cannot allow him to keep having hat tricks in games. Uh, he will get his chances for sure, but we need to find a way to limit him as much as possible. <sighs> Deep breaths. This is playoff hockey. And with that, I want to say thank you so much for watching this episode of Hawks Recap Late Night Edition. Game 3 is also going to be a late night edition. Not a big fan of these 9.30 p.m. starts, but it is what it is. Sacrifice has have to be made in the playoffs. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Like, share, and subscribe. Appreciate that as always. But most importantly, stay safe, make good decisions, and I'll see you next time for Game 3.